Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. Hello citizens of the internet. This is the second part of my e-lecture on twin gestation in which I will discuss the diagnosis of twin gestation. Please watch part 1 before watching this video. Gone are the days when an obstetrician would deliver a baby and walk away from the labor ward only to be told by the midwife, Doctor, hurry up, come back, there's another baby coming. In modern obstetrics, ultrasound has revolutionized the way we diagnose and manage multiple gestation. This is what I am going to discuss in detail in this e-video. The key to successful clinical diagnosis of multiple gestations is to think twins. Family history of multiple pregnancy, especially on maternal side and or recent intake of ovulation inducing drugs should make one suspect the possibility of it being a multifetal gestation. On examination, clinical findings that point to a plural pregnancy are barrel shaped abdomen, abdominal girth greater than 100 cm, fundal height greater than period of amenorrhea, too many fetal parts felt, or three fetal poles or two fetal heads are felt. Fetal hearts heard with maximum intensity in two separate areas by two observers with a minimum difference of 10 beats per minute suggests twins. However, this is not practical and never used for diagnosis of twins in the modern era. Occasionally, the superimposition of two fetal heart sounds produces a gallop rhythm. This is known as Arnox sign which is more useful for diagnosis. It is important on abdominal palpation to know the lie and presentation of the twins, especially near term as the management depends on it. Vertex vertex is the commonest type which is seen in 45% of twins. The next common combination is vertex breach or breach vertex seen in 35% cases. In another 10% cases, it may be breach breach and another 10% it may be transverse breach or transverse vertex. Transverse transverse is the rarest combination of twins. And now I am going to discuss the role of ultrasonography in diagnosis of multiple pregnancy. In modern obstetrics, most multifetal gestations are diagnosed by ultrasonography. From the first trimester until delivery of the second twin, the use of ultrasound in the management of twins is both ubiquitous and indispensable. In early pregnancy, transvaginal ultrasonography helps in early first trimester diagnosis of twins, determination of chorionicity and amnionicity, and diagnosis of vanishing twins. Later in pregnancy, ultrasonography helps in detection of congenital fetal anomalies, detection of lie and position of fetuses for intrapartum management, assessment of growth to rule out intrauterine growth restriction, and amniotic fluid to rule out polyaramnios, rule out placenta previa, diagnosis of discordant twins, and measurement of cervical length to diagnose preterm labor. I am going to discuss these indications for ultrasound in detail. Transvaginal sonography is essential for early diagnosis of twins. Twins can be suspected as early as 7 weeks when two separate gestational sacs are identified on transvaginal ultrasonography. But this needs further confirmation. It is prudent to wait until two separate embryos and heartbeats are visible to determine the number of fetuses in a pregnancy. A repeat ultrasonography at 8 weeks will show separate fetal bodies. 
at 12 weeks separate heads can be distinguished if routine scanning of all pregnant women is carried out at at least 16 weeks twins should rarely be missed the optimal time for determining chorionicity and amniocity using transvaginal ultrasound is between 6 to 10 weeks before 10 weeks gestation several sonographic findings can help determine chorionicity first the number of gestational sacs the presence of two gestational sacs implies a dichorionic pregnancy while a single gestational sac with two identified heartbeats implies a monochorionic twin pregnancy number of amniotic sacs if two separate and distinct amniotes are identified before 10 weeks on ultrasound it suggests diagnosis of diamniotic twins number of yolk sacs the number of yolk sacs is an accurate method of determining amniocity before the amnion can be visualized monoamniotic twins have a single yolk sac whereas diamniotic twins usually have two after 10 weeks following new set of sonographic findings will help determine amniocity and chorionicity first is gender discordance while different fetal gender identifies dichorionicity in all but the rarest cases concordance of gender phenotype does not rule out dichorionicity the number of distinct placentas seen will also help a single placental mass likely indicates monochorionicity whereas the presence of two distinct separate placentas identifies dichorionicity careful sonographic examination may help distinguish a single placenta from two placentas in abutment the most widely used sign for determining chorionicity is the twin peak or lambda sign it is a projecting zone of tissue of similar architecture to the placenta triangular in cross section and wider at the chorionic surface of the placenta extending into and tapering to a point within the intertwin membrane as seen here the twin peak sign most often identifies dichorionicity monochorionicity on the other hand can be determined by the absence of the twin peak sign the intertwin membrane directly inserts on the placenta without any wedge tissue and some people refer to it as the inverted t sign as seen here the characteristics of intertwin membrane can also help determine chorionicity the intertwin membrane of a dichorionic pregnancy consists of two layers of amnion and two layers of chorion it is thicker and more reflective than the monochorionic diamniotic membrane a membrane thickness of greater than 2 mm identifies dichorionicity whereas membrane thickness less than 2 mm suggests monochorionicity the membrane should be imaged perpendicularly to the ultrasound beam after magnification in the second trimester sometimes the number of membranes can be counted and if there are more than 2 then dichorionicity is strongly suggested this is known as the split membrane sign as seen here in this ultrasound picture determination of gestational age from fetal biometry in twin pregnancies is a dilemma which one to take as the correct gestational age when you find different fetal sizes when using ultrasonography for determining gestational age most experts use the larger of the two fetuses to date a pregnancy erring on the side of overestimation of gestational age and lessening the chances of missing intrauterine growth restriction in the smaller twin ultrasonography plays an important role 
in the diagnosis of discordant twins discordancy in the twins is defined by the following formula using the larger of the twins as the denominator it is given by the formula expected fetal weight of the larger twin minus the expected fetal weight of the smaller twin divided by the expected fetal weight of the larger twin into 100 there is no single definition of growth discordance in twins clinically significant birth weight threshold definitions in the literature based on morbidity and mortality in the postnatal population range from 15 to 30% we adopt a 20% threshold as a reasonable option another definition of significant growth discordance includes abdominal circumference measurement and a difference of greater than 20 mm between the two twins suggests fetal discordance monoamnionicity occurs in approximately 1% of all monozygotic twin pregnancies these pregnancies are at an elevated risk of fetal death because of cord entanglement therefore it is important to rule out monoamnionicity on ultrasound ultrasound findings suggestive of monoamniotic twins are non visualization of intertwin membrane entanglement of cords conjoined twins and single umbilical cord containing more than 3 vessels what about the role of doppler velocimetry in twins umbilical artery doppler should not be routinely offered in uncomplicated twin pregnancies serial doppler studies may be done however for early diagnosis of intrauterine growth restriction when ultrasound shows discordancy in multiple pregnancies aneuploid is screening using nuchal translucency and maternal serum alpha peto protein measurements should be offered an elevated maternal serum alpha peto protein value that is 4.5 times the median in an uncomplicated twin gestation is abnormal and requires further testing if ultrasound is not available plain x-ray of the abdomen can be used to confirm the diagnosis of twins or multiple pregnancies during my obgyn residency and early clinical practice there was no ultrasound we used to rely wholly on plain x-ray of the abdomen for diagnosis of multiple pregnancies and we were quite good at it using plain x-ray of the abdomen one can not only confirm the diagnosis in later stage of pregnancy but also know the lie and presentation diagnose conjoined twins accidental triplets rule out major congenital fetal anomalies and look for polyhydramnios one more thing the twins are baptized before they are born the twin which lies lower into the pelvis or tends to enter it first is known as the first of the twin or twin a and the twin which is at a higher level is known as the second of the twin or twin b both the x-ray plates seen here are of twin gestation the x-ray plate on the left shows both the twins are at the same level and therefore one cannot say which is twin a and which is twin b both are of breech presentation in the x-ray plate on the right the first twin that is twin a is in cephalic presentation probably vertex and twin b is in breech presentation there are no obvious fetal skeletal abnormalities and liker appears adequate this is the end of part 2 of my e lecture on twin presentation and in the third part i will discuss the management of twins for further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology refer to following books written by me practical obstetrics and gynecology 
modern obstetrics modern gynecology clinical cases in obstetrics questions and answers clinical cases in gynecology questions and answers and pelvic reconstructive surgery if you have found this video useful and informative please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking here